I'm excited about this one. The 2009 Mac Pro is my favorite Mac, hands down. Um, you know, there's a ton of expansion capability. You can replace pretty much everything in the entire machine and it still holds up today. So my goal for this video is to take a 4 comma 1 Mac Pro, update it to 5 comma 1, get an SSD in there, upgrade the memory, upgrade the GPU, upgrade the CPU, basically take it from being an okay machine, right, that can't run the latest and greatest, to something that can run uh, all the way up to Mojave and do it really well, better than my MacBook Pro, better than any of the iMacs that I have in my household. So let's go ahead and start off by tearing it apart a little bit. Uh, what I want to do is get the SSD in there, install El Capitan probably to start, upgrade all the way through to High Sierra, make sure, all, make sure that all of the firmware uh, for the motherboard is updated because this is the four comma one. We then have to tell the firmware to update to five comma one, basically tell it to be a newer Mac 2010 plus. Uh, once that is done, um, we can actually start to replace the CPU, replace the uh, GPU and go from High Sierra up to Mojave. So really excited about this one. These, these Mac Pros just love them. You can go to get a great deal on them uh, and take them to the max. And then if you want to, you can resell them once they're all the way updated for a profit or keep them, use them. Uh, haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this one yet. Uh, I got a great deal on it and I've got the parts to upgrade it. So let's just go ahead and do it. Okay, so a few things about the Mac Pro. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this OWC PCI to S, um, SATA for the SSD. Uh, but when you come in the Mac Pro, you can pull open, as long as this latch is open here, pull open, as you can see here, where the DVD drive is, and there's an extra SATA plug in here. So you could use that for a uh, SSD as well. And then of course, all the different expansion bays here. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use this card should give a theoretical higher performance when it's uh, placed in here. So just go ahead and unscrew a couple pieces, get it in there, and then we'll start the installation process for LCAP. All right, you're gonna wanna install El Capitan to just make sure everything's smooth. I've got a whole video out there on how to do this entire process, create the USB installer and install. The only weird hack you have to do is in the installer, once you're going through the process, go into terminal and change the date so that it, the install goes smoothly. Next up, disabling system integrity protection. So uh, basically, now that you've got El Capitan installed, hold down on option, on boot, right? And you're gonna get into the boot menu, select your recovery partition. And in the recovery partition, go ahead and open up terminal again and type in the command CSR util disable. Now you're good to go to actually update the firmware from four comma one to five comma one. So this process uh, is actually fairly straightforward. Search online for iFixit 4 comma 1 firmware, and iFixit has a pretty good guide. Uh, skip all the fluff here. You're going to have a different video card anyway, so what we're going to do is jump right down to the two links here where there's the EFI update and the firmware update tool. Open those both up in new tabs. Go into each one of those tabs and find the download link. Boom, there's one five. Go ahead and download that, and then at the attachment here in the form thread, go ahead and download that one. Drag them both to your desktop right? Uh, this will just make things easier. In this case, I, I recorded initially on the Mac Pro, um, and I'll show that a little bit, but it, you just couldn't see it as well. So I wanted to show this much more clearly. Open up the zip file, and you'll have a file in there that'll allow you to flash your Mac Pro. Now, the key thing here, mount the EFI update from Apple. Once that is mounted, you don't need to do anything with it. Just close that. But once it's mounted, you can now run the firmware update tool. It says that it's ready. Now read the instructions. It says hold the power button down until it flashes. So first, shut the system completely down. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll go ahead and tell it to shut down. We won't wait. Press OK first. OK. So it's going to completely turn off. I want to completely toast. And then a little spinning stuff. Uh, I think I just heard the power supply you know, spit out its a sort of off message. Um, and then we're going to hold down on the power button. We're gonna get some weird beeps. Let's go ahead and get a little bit closer for that. Hold it, keep holding it. You should even see a little flash as well, and then the weird noise. 
keep holding. There's the flashes. Now you can let go. And we should get a slightly different boot logo. Uh, and what that is, is it's updating the firmware on the motherboard. So there you go. You see this this boot, uh, I guess, I don't know what you call it, like a status indicator. Just a little bit different. You see. Now that your firmware is updated, you can start the process of installing High Sierra, right? The last supported um, 5 comma 1 install with the current graphics card if you're still running the old graphics card. Now, you will need to do yet another firmware update, but that's cool now, right? So this one's now updating your firmware to the latest, latest. And so you'll go ahead, select shut down, go through the exact same process, hold in that button, wait until it makes the goofy beep, wait until it goes through the status update, and then you should come through the actual High Sierra upgrade process. And now, with High Sierra installed, you should be ready to install your new graphics card. So now that we're running High Sierra, and it's now a 5 comma 1 Mac, we can start to upgrade the internal components. So, video card, CPU and memory. Now for the video card, it's potentially the trickiest. Uh, you'll notice here a fairly standard RX 480. Uh, and then I've got the internal cables for the Mac Pro. Uh, some of them do not come with these internal cables to connect uh, additional power to a GPU. So you may have to actually go and online and purchase them. They have sort of a special small six pin to a larger six pin uh, for internal power to be delivered to a GPU. Now, here's the issue. You'll notice this GPU has an 8-pin. Does it need that much power? No. No, not really. Uh, in fact, I've gotten away with, on uh, some cards, it'll actually only need the 6-pin plugged in with the two extra slots empty in order for it to get power. And that's what I'm going to try and do here first. The second thing you can do is actually get an adapter for the 480. Uh, in order to get the 6-pin to 8-pin. Additional considerations. So I've also used uh, Vega 56, Vega 64 within these machines. By default, the OEM cards, so the one, the blower fan, they actually had the capability, a little switch on it, to do low power and high power mode. I think the low power may have been made for some of these Mac Pro models. Speculation there but uh, it changed the upper limits of the power usage from 250 watts down to like 200 watts max. And so I got away once again with just the six pin to eight pin connectors, two of those for the uh, Vega 56 or Vega 64. Um, okay, future me here, just wanted to step in and do a couple quick clarifications. The RX 480, 470 line, they work really well in these Mac Pros. And that's what I would suggest because the price performance is right. Now, do not just get any of them, right? So in this video, I had two, right? I had the XFX and then I had the MSI. It was actually from a prior video where I was doing a Bitcoin mining machine. The XFX did not work, no matter what I did with it. It didn't matter about the power or anything else. And this is the second or third I've tried in one of these machines because I've done multiple and I've had these XFX cards lying around. They just do not boot. They don't work with the Mac Pro. Every MSI card I've ever tried has worked. Every Sapphire card I've ever tried has worked. The Power Color Single Fan Edition, I haven't had any of the other ones, uh, has worked as well. So I'd stick to those um, for your Mac Pro builds and uh, you know, I'll try to find a list of all the compatible cards and put it into the description. Also, I was talking a bit about Vega 56, Vega 64. Every single one of those that I had that was the OEM uh, blower fan style worked perfectly. No problems there. I've also tried some of the 460s, right? And uh, I wasn't able to get the, the RX 460 to work. That would be sort of the least expensive option. But honestly, right now, the price between the 570s, the, the 470s, 480s, 580s, and the 460 uh, edition, uh, you might as well just go for a 470. It's twice the performance. So that's a quick uh, recap here. Want to make sure you don't just go out and buy an XFX like I'm showing here because it didn't work. In fact, you'll see I switched to the MSI, but I wanted to just edit out all my rambling here. Okay, cool. Enjoy the rest. 
All right, the MSI plug and play. I did a six pin from the motherboard to an eight pin connector. I showed the image earlier. Uh, you can just find those on Amazon, pretty straightforward. And then went ahead and turned on the machine. All right, so you'll notice that the colors are a little bit off when your machine starts up. I think this is more of an MSI uh, V BIOS thing. Long story short, when you get updated to uh, Mojave, you're not going to have a problem with the coloring on the screen. So just ignore that and continue with the install process. You're mostly just making sure, cool, it works, and then you move on to getting the updated CPU and other hardware in your machine. The Mac Pro has just an amazing design for removing the CPU and memory to make it easily upgradable. Two little latches, push in and then pull out on those. You can see it just slides the entire tray right out, just in and out. Just be sure that when you're, you know, <laughs> putting this in and out that it, you're on those rails that you can see at the bottom. Once you have it out, it's really easy to work on. I'll go ahead and I'll flash up the size of the hex wrench that I used. You just need it to be long enough to reach down into the heat sink and get to those, uh, those uh, bolts that are down there. Um, it'll have a little bit of resistance and it'll sort of snap and then of course when you go to reinstall make sure that when you're reinstalling you don't just do them all in a circle sort of rotate back and forth in between them the process itself fairly straightforward when the heat sink is now completely disconnected just sort of shake it twist it a little bit side to side nothing too crazy and then lift up there is one fan connector on it so that will have a little bit of resistance as well but it should slide up and then make it very easy for you to start messing with the cpu all right let's go ahead and use the little latch next to the cpu pop it up open up the entire assembly and grab that old cpu out bring in the new one and i edited it out where i dropped it but whatever it's a 20 dollars cpu <laughs> no big deal line up the little notches in it and make sure that it's fitting in there correctly and just repeat the process in reverse so that you now have your new cpu installed you'll want to put of course you want to put some uh you know thermal paste on top make sure it's all clean i even cleaned the old cpu um, but just uh, the best guidance i can give here is the new thermal paste just put you know a, a uh, rice sized amount the pressure will spread it out you don't want to have too much you don't want to have too little but a piece of rice or a grain of rice is about the the rule that i've always followed i think i was using arctic silver in this one uh, fairly inexpensive to get off uh, amazon and fairly straightforward go ahead and retighten all the bolts and then after that pop out your old memory this is uh ddr3133 now with the CPU upgraded, it can actually accept um, uh, 1666. I went ahead and ordered 32 gigs of uh, ECC DDR3 133. I, I didn't even go for the faster memory because uh, it was less expensive. It was like 20 or 30 bucks. So um, there we go. Go ahead and install the new memory and you can actually slide the board back into the computer and check and see if you screwed anything up. Uh, in this case, I was lucky. Nothing was messed up and uh, Boom. We'll go ahead and move on to the next step, which is actually now getting on to the latest operating system that your new Mac Pro 5.1 fully upgraded can run. All right, so now just go ahead and log into High Sierra, open up your browser, search for install Mojave. There's an Apple support article that has a link hidden in it to download Mojave. So it'll try to get you to install Catalina, but we don't want to do that. So go ahead and grab the Mojave installer and uh, it's very straightforward. You don't need any weird hacks. It'll install right out of the box for this machine with your updated video card, CPU and RAM. So a fairly straightforward process to get Mojave going. Nothing crazy, once again. Um, the video card will stop with the weird coloring artifacts on Mojave. It just has the best uh, combination of drivers for this machine. So now you've got your six core, 32 gigs of RAM, SSD, upgraded GPU, uh, Mac Pro, ready to go. So you can go ahead and add to your collection of CPUs, add to your collection of memory, and do another. Okay. so. There we go. Um, the Mac Pro 4.1, so 2009 edition, uh, is really easy to get all the way updated to quite a beast machine for even 2020, right? Um, it is more powerful 
than my 2014 MacBook Pro, right? It's got a better GPU, it has more cores, more threads. Now, it is gonna be a little bit less efficient. <laughs> it's gonna use quite a bit more power, but overall, really easy upgrade. They can be found for fairly inexpensive, especially the four comma ones. You can actually get the, the, 10, uh, the 2010, which is a five comma one just out of the box, but they're gonna cost you an extra $50 for what really is a few minutes worth of effort to get it updated. Um, you know, the, these were going for $150. In fact, I even a while ago picked one up locally uh, in my area and I think I got it for $100, right? Um, and they were, they were great deals. Now, the price has started to creep up. Um, to get a single CPU model, you're probably looking at $250 shipped from eBay. Uh, the one with the dual CPUs in it, if you could find those, those are really awesome, um, but they're gonna add an extra $100 or $200 to that price. So even completely unupgraded and running, uh, really, to a point where you have to update the CPUs in order to get to Mojave, um, you're looking at, at four or $500 for that machine, just stock. So um, keep a lookout on eBay, right? Uh, definitely look out at the shipping costs. They, they cost a ton to ship. So if you can find one for free shipping, that's awesome. And um, I'd say, you know, overall recommendation wise, these are an amazing machine for the price. You know, the only downside is they don't come with a, you know, a screen. They don't come with a trackpad, a keyboard, right? All the things that I'm used to doing with the, either the iMacs or, or the MacBook Pros. Um, CPU recommendation wise, I found Price-wise, the X5675 is your best all around. Um, not, now, not every CPU, if you get the dual CPU one, not every single CPU can actually be deployed in two um, side by side, right? So you have to actually pay more to actually get a, a CPU that will work with two of them in one machine, but the X5675 can do that as well. So all around, it is the winner in my opinion perfect price performance as well as power usage. It's a little bit lower power usage chip. It's got six cores, 12 threads. It boosts to 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, base is three uh, gigahertz. So it's just a great CPU. Um, and I wouldn't pay much more than about $26 shipped. AliExpress is gonna be your go-to for that one. So once again, price performance, it's, it's just a great blend. This machine is awesome, especially if you don't need to carry it around because it is gonna be about 50 pounds. Um, so there you go. If you need more power, right, go for this machine. It is your best price performance. Um, that's about it, right? Okay, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and hit subscribe. You don't need to turn on the bell icon or anything. Uh, then again, I'm probably only gonna be publishing you know, one every couple weeks, but I've got a few more interesting projects. Got a uh, old Mac mini that can be updated. I'm going to go ahead and see how that one does. And I've also got to tear apart my old 2007 iMac and take that one to the max now too.